Well, good hump day afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. And um, I just got finished doing my Wednesday hump day thing. Um, I know once I get the beat down from Philly 500 and Dan Salio that um, the rest of the week is downhill. It's easy after this. Um, this is interesting um, news here. Um, we heard that, um, you know, there's some rumors that were going around that the Cowboys are going to be bringing in Justin Simmons um, to uh, kick the tires on Friday, possibly, um, as well as Michael Thomas. Um, maybe the Cowboys are looking at things and saying it's time to start getting stuff, some stuff done. And the way this offseason has been, I will be honest with you that this year seems like the worst as far as Dallas Cowboys and lack of Dallas Cowboys moves and that the fans have literally been pissed off. Pissed off, okay? Now, let me give a little background on Dan Salio. Dan Salio went to the U to the U, played with Michael Irvin and everything else, and he was with the Dallas Cowboys for one year. He is friends with Stephen Jones and the Cowboys organization, and we are going to be, because as he puts it, he gets invited, of course, every year because he's friends with Stephen Jones. And don't shoot the messenger here, but I'm going to give all credit here to Dan uh, that maybe he spilled some beans or maybe Dan's just full of shit. But let me play exactly the clip from him of what could be a game changer, and then we'll discuss it. Is that when these guys talk, they don't really give a shit if you like That's what they're feeling. saying or you don't like what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Because just look at what those Miami guys did. Those Miami right. guys were belly aching and bitching and crying about Vic Fangio. They broke a sack record down there. And they were doing pretty good until they ended up getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, him bringing up the Philadelphia Philly 500. I said, I go, what, what do you think he brings? He goes, well, I'll just tell you this. There's going to be a no shit kind of scenario there. And you better buckle it up here. This way Mark for made Viv that Zeke was better than no, Barkley. I did not. That's a liar there. He also said that uh, Parsons was, <laughs> was LP. So, you know. No, he didn't. I said he did some. I said so you did. could compare said, some of the he's things. He's done he a did. few things like LT starting out his career. He numbers did. wise. Uh, he, he, he said he's LT. plays edge. Oh. Yeah, there you go. So, you, you see what I have to put up with my to ass, try and get extra number. information for you guys. Kiss my ass, Dan. Name, name me one thing you that know, guy does Dan, better than I'll tell you what, man. Are, are you going to really Hot show up at Cowboys training camp? Are you really going to show up or are you going to leave me holding the bag? There you go. I go, I, I, I go there almost every year to go visit and see Steven. Okay. By the way, oh, I get invited man. Okay. Yeah, let me be a fly on the wall with that one. So let me let me smack Steve. No, that's why I know T. Higgins is being kicked around the Cowboy Complex right now. I'll tell you what, Philly, if they get T. Higgins and they have C.D. Lamb on the other side. Oh, and man. Their offensive That'd be line great. is not bad. They're It'd pretty be, good in the middle, especially at the guard position. That, that could. Did you hear that? He said that three times on the show that the Cowboys, how he knows the Cowboys are kicking around the idea of T Higgins. Let's, let's listen a little further. Look like something and no chance. Well, hey, well like, actually oh, that would help you out the really offensive have line. have anybody to guard them on your defense. They, but it won't happen. They can't even sign their own players. You never They're not going to go out and trade for a guy. Well, I tell you what, that I know. Here's, here's I, what I, I know. I know for sure. Here's what I will say, you know, because there's rumors of, like I said, Michael Thomas and Justin Simmons coming in for workouts on Friday. Now, whether or not that happens, I don't know. But I think right now, if I gauge Cowboy fans as where we've been this year, Cowboy fans are really pissed. And the Joneses need to do something to kind of turn that narrative around as we get into training camp. And but, all of a sudden, if the Cowboys were to pull off something like that, all of a sudden, that is a major buzz. That changes the narrative all, all the way around. And also, that would truly help the team. Because, see, the thing about Mike McCarthy is Mike McCarthy likes to spread the ball around. He likes to have a lot of different weapons and things. And if they do have a, a T. Higgins out there, oh, my God, 
they're going to be able to spread out the field where that offensive line is not going to have to hold up as long, and it's going to make it more effective. Uh, the Cowboys, what would, what would the Cowboys and Ayuk wouldn't work because they're not going to trade inside the conference. Mm -mm. That's why T. Higgins is more of the target because the Bengals would trade out of the conference. They don't want to trade. What are you they asking for? City, what are they asking for? City for? Getting a hold of T. Higgins. What, what are they asking for, though? I'd I don't know that horse, yet. I have but, but, yeah, they're, they're kicking it around, but I'd give up a first for that. But the, if well, you're they, talking they, about they blowing it up, like hey. They did Devontae because, remember, right now he, he signs he signs the um, – he's still under the fifth-year option. No, wait. I don't know. He oh, wasn't the first the rounder. Tag. So, he is he, – they gave, the, he, they gave him the franchise tag. He signed that. So, he's got 14-something right now or 15-something or 18-something. I don't know what that number exactly is. But that's where he is. So they would give him one year to be able to restructure a contract and work something, I don't know, like they did with Devontae Smith because yeah. they're not going to pay him more than what they're paying CeeDee Lamb if they drop $35, 36000000 million on CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb's not Justin Jefferson. Their he's life's going problem. Want 20, he's going to want $20 million probably. Well, he's already, oh, on, the, okay. he's he's already on the franchise tag. Okay, here's the thing. Hold on. Hold on. He's already on the franchise million. tag for this year. Which is twenty-one right. million dollars. That's not going to change. You could theoretically drop him on the tag again next year too. Right, you could, which would be probably about twenty-seven or so. Um, but you know, if you're saying we're going all in, what the fuck? You know, this is an all-in move to try and see if you can win it all. And then, well, and, and I will say this me. much: I will say this much. If you do that, then Dak Prescott does not have any excuses whatsoever because now you've got an up-and-coming tight end. He shouldn't have any yeah. now. You got two really good wide receivers and a third that is actually not bad. You've got a young offensive line. You don't have a great running back, but I'll take that in a heartbeat. How about this, Philly? Okay. Two last ones here for you here. We'll end it right there. So, I don't know. I, I'm just uh, – don't, don't shoot the messenger. Deal with the message. We're talking about T. Higgins now. Some people say, oh, they're going to get him to replace – um, C.D. Lamb. Well, you could, um, I guess, but I don't look at him as the number one wide receiver. Um, so far in his career, he's been in for four years, so he's not an old guy. Um, we're talking about uh, his rookie year, 67 receptions, 908 yards, 13.6 yards per catch, um, six TDs, uh, 21, 74, t uh, 1,091 yards, 14.7, um, 22, uh, 1,029 yards, 7 TDs, 13.9. And last year, with Joe Burrow only playing, I got to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Last year, with Joe Burrow um, only playing 10 games, understand, he only played 10 games in there. Um, Higgins was injured part of the year. He only played in 12. Um, only got 656 yards and 15.6 yards per reception. And he had Jake Browning throwing to him on quite a few of those games. So when you look at that and say, if you can add that kind of firepower and youth-wise, yeah. Now, the thing is, is what would it cost to get, to, to get him? If you're the Bengals right now, you know this is the last year I'm going to have of him. At the end of the year, if I don't trade him before the end of the year, I get nothing. You can save yourself the $21.8 million this year and get some compensation. Would a number two go for him? I don't know. I doubt it. But then again, when you look at it and say a second round pick and $21 million, maybe that's a little bit better of a deal right now. As opposed to I pay the $21 million and at the end of the year, I lose them with nothing. So this definitely bears watching. And looking at this from the Cowboys standpoint, if you're getting him on the franchise tag right now at 21, probably he doesn't want to be franchise tagged again. But technically, if you get him, you could probably franchise tag him again the next year, which, like I said, would be probably a uh, 30% increase. So that's an additional, say, $6.2 million. So for about $27, 28000000 million, you could end up having him again for the following year. And if you're talking about selling hope, to the fans, yeah, you're going to have to do, you can do that. Now, here's the problem of doing this. At the moment, you only have $12 million. 
You only have $12 million of cap space. Um, that $21 million is a hard deal. The, the franchise tag would transfer, I believe, to the Cowboys, the full amount. And that full amount is due now, which means you have to create some cap space. Another additional eight-plus million dollars. Now, here's where it could get interesting. If you were to get C.D. Lamb's deal done, in which case you got a deal that's similar to Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson's cap number went from $17 million down to eight. There you have $9 million you could add to it. That's how you could get C.D. Lamb done, and you could end up having T. Higgins on the roster, and that definitely looks a lot more like all in. So we'll see if anything happens on here. That's what I see as far as roadblocks on that situation is. What would you be willing to give up compensation-wise? And, you know, uh, draft picks, because Cincinnati will definitely want to get him, which may be a number one. Would you give up a number one for T. Higgins? I tell you what, you put T. Higgins in that offense and get CeeDee Lamb in here happy. With Brandon Cooks, you will spread out the field, and you will make um, Zeke Elliott that much more effective, and you would definitely be able to open up the field. With Jake Ferguson... With T. Higgins, with, oh my God, Brandon Cooks and C.D., man, that offense would be a killer. We'll see. We'll see. As always, I appreciate you guys, and I will see you soon. Peace.